people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. I know, really? Today we're back with my ever popular witchcraft almanac series, looking at what witchcraft you can do on which day and why during the month of July. So as always with these videos, what I really like to do is to give you a general overview of the witchcraft trends that run throughout the month of July and those things that you should keep in mind with your everyday daily practice. Then we can move on to the nitty gritty day to day detail of what witchcraft to do and when and why. And we'll also have an overview of the traditions, superstitions and rituals throughout this month. So with that said, let's get on to our overview. July, of course, is named after Julius Caesar. I'm sure you all know this. He was quite funny, actually. He named the month after himself so he could give him a little pat on the back for being so wonderful to reform the calendar. So, whatever. However, before this time, the Anglo-Saxons knew it as the Mead Monoth or the Hay Monoth or Litha, meaning Mead Monoth, the time of Mead, the month of Mead, Hay Monoth, the month of Hay, Litha Monoth, the month of light. And this is where we get the word litha from, which we use in correlation with the midsummer solstice. July is therefore known as the last month of summer. Now, as some people had a go in my comments section in my last video concerning this, saying summer's not now, summer is you know, June, July and August. Well, different energies have different seasons ascribed to them. And the summer season is an energy which is growing outwards, meaning that we're growing up and out. Autumn energy, August, September and October, are about ripening, fattening and setting seed. Different style of energy. Hence why summer always starts in May, May, June, July. July is therefore the last day of summer. To be fair, the sun is now turned towards the dark half of the year. Not only is this the last month of the summer season, it is also a time for varying other trends. So let's go through them. The first one that I want to talk about is the time for bees. This is when bees are at their height and bees are incredibly energetic and involved with witchcraft. Should a bee wander into your house during this month, then you will be sure to have a lot of visitors. It's incredibly bad luck to kill any bee, so please don't. And don't, you know, shoo it out. Let the bee find its own way out, and it will. If you keep bees, it's important that the hive should be jointly owned by yourself and your partner, whoever that may be. It's unlucky for a hive to be owned by one person. I think it's something to do with that if one of the owners dies, then there's somebody else to tell the bees what's going on. You know that old tradition that you should whisper to the bees everything that's happening within your house that is a major event, such as births, marriages or deaths. And maybe that's got something to do with it. I mean, it feels like that sort of energy anyway. Bees obviously have been used in charms throughout this time of year. So should you find a dead bee, you can use that because it's got that bee energy and that bee buzziness to bring into a good luck charm. The beginning half of the month is when you are going to see some noctilucent clouds. This is this beautiful cloud formation at night where you see these shining clouds over the night sky and it starts around the midsummer solstice time and goes on throughout the first half or so of July. So should you have nothing better to do, look out of your window at night and see if you can see this stunning spectacle. It is considered great moon season as a result. So this first half of the month is therefore very, very associated with the moon. It's probably to do with the fact that we've spent the last few weeks or so going midsummer solstice, midsummer solstice, and now the moon's saying, kind of, well, I think I'd like a bit of a look in. So do make all your moon spells around this first couple of weeks of July. July is also the prime season for the merfolk. They're called merry folk or merry men in the southwest and I love that sort of phrase of them because they are deeply bound up with seals. The UK is home to about a third of the population of the world's grey seals. These seals or selkies were known to come onto the land and shape shift. They could cast off their seal skin leave it somewhere safe and then go about their day as an incredibly attractive man or woman. Witches were known to turn people into seals and so it's 
very, very bad luck to go out and hurt a seal because you might be hurting your next door neighbour. It's part and parcel of the merfolk legends, I think, that where the seals come in and the merfolk come in because seals with their huge grey eyes and their wonderful whiskery faces are wise and kind. And that is what they're considered to be. So do have a look for those beautiful animals if you're out on the coastline. So there is a dichotomy to seals because a seal skin cloak will give you incredible power and enchantment ability. However, you risk being cursed because you've killed a seal. Six of one and 20 dozen of the other, I feel, in my opinion on that. I'm with the, on the side of the seals, may I say. And if you're on the coastline, you can also look out for the Merry Maids or the Merry Men of Cornwall. These are, of course, the merfolk, not just the seals. It's incredibly unlucky to harm a merfolk as well, because you will be cursed. And let's not face it, any curse is going to be a bad thing. Be respectful to the merry maids, should you see them. They do like a bit of an offering, and sometimes I make wreaths of flowers to cast upon the water from whatever is around at the time. July is also the start of the dog days of summer, those long, hot, lazy days. Of course, in Europe, they didn't like them. They thought that this summer of heat would send dogs mad, tempers would fray, because, you know, over there it's 30 degrees, and in the UK we might hit a 23 if we're lucky. So we love the dog days of summer, and I look forward to seeing the Sirius stars as they rise up with the sun in the mornings. Overall, the energy for July is one of a sort of settled contentment and happiness. In the UK, of course, we've got fates and fairs abounding. You can barely go into a village at a weekend without something happening, which is, well, great in my opinion. And lastly, for my introduction, which is so exciting, I cannot tell you how thrilled I am to talk about crop circles. Now, I know nothing about crop circles apart from that I find them fascinating. I watch documentary after documentary about crop circles, and the only reason I mention them here is because this is the time for crop circles. They're normally centred on Wiltshire, around Stonehenge and Avebury, where there are large arable fields perfect for those crop circles. But here are a few of my favourites. <laughs> has turned. As July moves forward, you can feel the energy, instead of being more outward and exuberant, it's more beginning to tail off and settle. So it's a quieter month than most for witchcraft. So that is my overview. It is time for the merfolk, the seals, to walk by the coasts, to enjoy the dog days of summer and to look out for those wonderful crop circles that I am slightly obsessed with, I have to say. I just, I find them fascinating. I love it. And so now let's get into the nitty gritty day to day detail. And we're going to start off with July the 5th. July the 5th is, of course, the new moon. Astrologers believe that new moons take on the aspects of the zodiac sign that they appear in. And this new moon is in Cancer. Cancer is all about domesticity, and so this is a great moment to put in plans that will increase your domestic bliss, your home life. And these plans will then come to fruition in the full moon of Cancer, which is six months' time in December. The sun is also at aphelion at the moment, which means it's the furthest away from the Earth that it can be during its yearly elliptical orbit. What this means in witchcraft is that the sun, although it's at its full strength at the moment, is just that little bit further away. So maybe we should look to the moon. And this Cancer new moon is a great to really look at future domestic happiness. The 5th of July is also known as Old Midsummer Day. So several hundred years ago, when they changed the calendar, we lost 11 days or so. And some folk, particularly let's go for those in the north in Walton Village, I'm, you know, looking at you, decided they would not follow the changes to the calendar and would keep to the old days. 
This meant that they then celebrated Midsummer on the 5th of July. So in Walton, in Northumberland, they build their Baal Fire, which is a massive bonfire in the village, which they all then dance around and jump through and carry out their Midsummer activities, which is fabulous. If you have missed any Midsummer activities and you feel like going up to Northumberland, have a look at it because it is great fun. This day is also known as a superb day for divination. Should you want to foretell any fortunes, try them out today. A bit of tarot cards, maybe some oracle cards, maybe some casting of the runes. Whatever you want to try, have a go today because the muse will be with you. Superstition tells us as well that this is the day that should you be travelling abroad, beware of bumping into Robin Goodfellow. Robin Goodfellow, by any other name, is Puck, the Prince of the Fairies. He will curse you because he doesn't want to be stumbled upon today, but the way you can get around this is by taking your coat and turning it inside out and putting it on. And apparently he'll be so puzzled about why you're wearing your coat inside out that he'll forget to curse you. The 15th of July is St Swithin's Day, and this is the weather divination day from old. If it rains today, it will rain for another 40 years. 40 years, 40 days, sorry, 40 years, that sounded terrible, doesn't it? However, if you own an orchard, you want it to rain today because this was considered a blessing of the old gods on your orchard and you will get a good crop. If it does rain today, it is probably most likely that we are in for a period of unsettled, precipitous weather because weather patterns tend to come in sort of two weeks periods about this time. So fingers crossed for me at least that we don't get any rain on St Swithin's Day. The 17th of July is the start of the Perseids meteor shower. Sadly, on this day, the moon is quite full and so we won't get a particularly bright look at the sky. They'll be obscured by the light from the moon. And should you see a shooting star, what do you do? Well, of course, you wish. And as I'm always saying, wish magic should always be incredibly personal. Do not wish for anyone else. You always wish for yourself. Wishing for others will not necessarily come true. The 21st of July is the night of the full moon. This full moon is known as a wort moon, a mead moon, hay moon, or the great American plain tribes call it, and let me just check this actually, the, the moon when the choke berries begin to ripen. And that's the Arapaho tribe of the Great Plains. Well, I think it's rather charming. Full moon is in Capricorn, making us sure-footed and focused with the light of the moon guiding us on our way. This is my full moon actually because I'm Capricorn which is great so I must remember to celebrate this moon because it really appeals to my particular sure-footed Capricornian energy. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. It's, it's probably going to involve meeting with my coven and probably discussing our next few meetings together because we haven't planned what's going to happen and it's nice to have a framework when you're meeting with your coven in order to you know make the most of the time that you have with them. But I just want to go back to what the Anglo-Saxons called it, the wort moon. Wort is a name for a herb that we would use medicinally or for a purpose, uh, like wound wort, lung wort or soap wort, which all of which describe the purpose that they are being used for. Soap wort is that rather beautiful flower, which when you put it in water, it makes a lathery liquid, which is very gentle. And in fact, Old museums such as the VNA Museum use it on their incredibly delicate fabric still because it isn't kind to the fibres of the fabric, yet will remove the grease. The 23rd of July is when the sun enters the house of Leo. And as always, I like to tell you what the calendar of shepherds from 1603 says about the Leo man and the Leo woman. So, the man born under Leo shall be hardy. He shall speak openly and be merciful. That's quite nice about Leo, man. But he shall be arrogant in words. I'm not sure what arrogant in words means. At 30 years old, he shall be damaged, but shall eschew that peril. He will often go on pilgrimages and suffer pain of the sight. He shall fall from them on high. At 36 years old, he shall be bitten of a dog and shall live until he's 94. No, they're quite nice about him. Let's see what they say about the woman. Probably something terrible. They're never terribly nice about the woman in these things. The woman shall be a great liar. 
Oh dear, fair, well-spoken, pleasant, merciful, and may not suffer to see men weep. I like the fact that they start off with the liar and then go on to say, fair, well-spoken, pleasant, merciful and kind, essentially. Her first husband shall not live long, but she shall live to get great riches and shall have children of three men. Well done. She shall live till 78 years. So they're both quite long-lived. Anyway, that's what the calendar of shepherds say about Leo. Let me know in the comments below if you think that's true. And for the last date in our calendar is, of course, the 31st of July. This is the start of the oyster season. And for all those of you who live near the coastline, it's really important to go out and eat some oysters because this means that you will have plenty of money for the coming year. So, eat some oysters, get some cash. What do you think about these suggestions and how to celebrate and do your daily witchcraft practice? Let me know in the comments below what you're going to do and how you're going to celebrate throughout July. Personally, for me, it's very much a going out and looking at other people's gardeners. Being a keen gardener, I'm not a good gardener, I'm just keen. There's a difference. I have black fingers, everything dies, but I like to go and look at other people's gardens and see how they get on. So that's what I'm mostly going to be doing. Well, that's the job, the children, the house looking after and the animals. So, you know, as much as I can. If you would like to learn more about any sort of witchcraft, do come and join me on Patreon. My coven is coming up for July, so if you join, you can come to that, and I promise you, you'll learn so much. Otherwise, please don't forget to like and subscribe, because this really helps my channel and enables me to carry on making these videos all for you. And I will see you next week.